Okay, so I want to do some Stokes theorems questions. So this is question 13. I'm going to do the, the second problem here. Um, this is the vector field that we want to integrate. This is the curve. And I didn't write it, but I should have said we want to do counterclockwise orientation. So Stokes theorem says that, so this is the integral that we want to compute. Stokes theorem says that it is equal to the surface integral of the curl field, the gradient or the gradient cross with F. This is the curl of F. Okay, uh, and S is just any surface whose boundary is C. Okay, uh, by how do we compute? So now this is the surface integral of a vector field. We've already done surface integrals of vector fields. We just compute it as a surface integral of the vector field that we're integrating dotted with the normal vector. Okay, this is a scalar field. So this integral is the surface integral of a scalar field. And this is just equal to the integral, the double integral over the parameter domain of the vector field dotted within evaluated at the parameterization times the magnitude of rs cross rt ds dt okay now actually the parameters we're going to use are theta uh, and r instead of s and t but we're just going to go through this problem and fill in each one of these things you know replace it with an actual thing so i'm going to go ahead and erase this or actually i'll just come down here on a new line okay so the first thing that we're going to need to do is figure out a parameterization for the for the parapoloid okay so this should be standard by now it's okay if it's not but it should be pretty standard for you this is r of theta r this is r cosine theta r sine theta 1 minus r squared and note uh so l let me just point out before actually so before i go on i'm doing some implicit thing here that i need to explain a little more so c is the boundary of this paraboloid so this is a downward facing paraboloid uh the, the top of the paraboloid is at zero zero one the top of the paraboloid is at zero zero one okay and so we want the boundary of this paraboloid that's in the first octant so the surface so c is the curve it's the boundary of this paraboloid the surface is going to be the actual paraboloid okay a lot of surfaces have c as the boundary curve but the most obvious one to use is going to be the actual paraboloid okay so a lot of surfaces have C as their boundary, but the most obvious one is the paraboloid. So S is gonna be the paraboloid. So this is the parameterization for the paraboloid, but notice that we just want the part of it in the first octant. So this tells us that we want to have theta, the domain, we're gonna have theta go from zero to pi over two, okay? And then as usual, R will go from zero to one. Um, why does R go from zero to one? Well, if the projection of this shape onto the xy plane is going to be a disk of radius one centered at the origin. That's what happens when you set z is equal to zero. Okay, then. Um, so that means uh, in the integral, we'll have theta going from zero to pi over two. We'll have r going from zero to one. Now we need to fill in this part over here. So um, I'll let you uh, do this on your own, but uh, r theta cross r r is equal to minus two r squared cosine theta minus two r squared sine theta minus r and the magnitude of r theta cross r r is equal to r times the square root of four r squared plus one. Okay, so now we're gonna use this. So we, this part right here is gonna go here. Okay, so we've done part of it. So I'm gonna write more here. I don't wanna, don't wanna fill this in yet because I don't wanna, don't want to run out of room. We're gonna have to compute the curl of f and then the normal vector. So remember, for the normal vector, we first make a guess that it's going to be r theta cross r r over the magnitude. Check to see if that gives the right orientation. If it doesn't give the right orientation, we have to multiply it by minus 1. Okay, so for this problem, what is the right orientation? Well, if the boundary has counterclockwise orientation, uh, by the right-hand rule, this means that the paraboloid needs outward orientation. Okay, so let's, let's look at r theta cross r r. 
divided by the magnitude r theta cross rr. This, so it's just this vector here divided by the magnitude. So this is going to be minus 2r cosine theta minus 2r sine theta minus 1 divided by the square root of 4r squared plus 1. Okay, so now if you look at this vector when r is equal to 0, so, that, so if, when r is equal to 0, if you look at this vector, this is going to be the normal vector at the north pole, at the point 0, 0, 1. Okay, and so because we come up here to the parameterization, if r is equal to 0, this is 0, 0, 1. Okay, so the normal vector, uh, the normal vector, so th this vector at r is equal to 0 is going to be, well, this will be 0, this will be 0, this will be minus 1, and the denominator will be 1. So what does this say? At the north pole, this vector is 0, 0, minus 1. Now that's not right because that is the doubt that is a downward pointing orientation. So like this is sort of a uh, the side view of the paraboloid. So this right here is a vector. That's what this vector is. It's pointing downwards. But we want the upward pointing orientation. Okay. So we need to multiply this by minus one. So this tells us that the normal vector. Sorry, let me erase that really quickly. So this tells us that the normal vector is equal to 2r cosine theta, 2r sine theta 1 divided by the square root of 4r squared plus 1. Okay, so that's in. Now we need to compute the curl of f. Uh, so this is the vector field. Now I need to compute the curl of f and do the dot product of that with in. So the curl of f, this is i. So I know this work is kind of hard to follow, but I don't have a lot of room to move around here. And I'm also bad at doing the board work anyway. And this is equal to, again, I'll let you figure this. I'll let you do this on your own. This is minus y minus z minus x. OK, so now this is the curl of f. So remember, when you compute the curl, you need to do it in, uh, in Cartesian coordinates. Once you have the curl, then you can write it in terms of the parameterization. But, but do not write it in terms of the parameterization and then do the curl. That's just going to be the totally wrong thing. OK, so if we write the curl of f in the parameterization then, the curl of f written in the parameterization, well, come back up here. Um, x is r cosine theta. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to put r cosine theta. Wherever I see a y, I'm going to put r sine theta. Wherever I see a z, I'm going to put 1 minus r squared. So then x, or sorry, the, the curl of f then is minus r sine theta minus r cosine theta. Oops, sorry. This is z is minus 1 minus r squared and then minus r cosine theta. Okay, so now this tells us that the curl of f dotted with n, so the curl of f dotted with n is equal to minus 2r squared sine theta cosine theta plus one minus r squared two r sine theta minus r cosine theta divided by the square root of four r squared plus one. Okay, so now I'm going to fill this in up here on the integral. This is the curl of f dotted with n. 
So there's a minus sign that I'm going to put in front of the in front of the integral here. So now this is going to be well. Let me just write it without. Okay, as you can tell, while I was pausing and writing, I um I made this red instead of black, so it stands out a little better. This is going to be like the integral that we're actually computing. Okay, so we've done the bounds part. That's the bounds. We've done the curl of f dotted within. The curl of f dotted within is this thing times minus one. So there's a minus one there. Now we need to multiply by the magnitude of the cross product. So the magnitude of the cross product is this. So this is going to be times four times the square root uh, r times the square root of four r squared plus one dr d theta. Okay, now of course the parts that are making us nervous are these square roots, but those cancel. And so what you're left with uh, is going to be a polynomial in the variable r to integrate, and then a trig integral uh, in the theta integral. But for the look, for, look at the theta integral, sine theta, cosine theta, that's fine. Sine theta times cosine theta, you do that with u substitution. The rest, the r integral, like I said, is just a polynomial in r. Uh, so it might be kind of aggravating to compute. But uh, this is equal to minus 17 over 20. Again, it might be tedious to compute, but it's straightforward. Okay, so again, the review, going over what we did here, we started with the uh, uh, line integral of a vector field over a closed curve with counterclockwise orientation. Stokes' theorem says that this is equal to the surface integral of the curl field, where the surface has uh, outward orientation or orientation that is consistent with the, with the orientation of the curve. How do we compute surface integrals of vector fields? Well, we compute them as surface integrals of a particular scalar field. That scalar field is a vector field that we're interesting in, interested in computing, which at this point is the curl of f, uh, dotted with the normal vector. So this is a scalar field. How do we compute a scalar field? Well, this is the formula right here. It's the scalar field evaluated at the parameterization uh, times the magnitude of this cross product uh, the cross product of the tangent vectors, and we're integrating over the parameter domain. Okay, again, kind of a tedious problem to do, but it's way better if we had tried to just integrate, do this line integral uh, from the definition of line integral, we would have had to split it up into three awkward curves and done most of this work on each one of those curves. So I think in this case, Stokes' theorem is better.